Let's call the meeting to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, be with us this evening as we do the business of the city for the good and the welfare of the people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this is the uh, I received rule of agenda to approve the agenda for August 14, 2023, regular planning commission meeting, and I will ask to consider including item H.2, the site plan for Goddard Crossing in that agenda. I move to approve the agenda for August 14, 2023. All second. All favor? Aye. 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 Very good. This is item D, citizens comments. At this point, anybody that wants to comment on any of the agenda items or anything else for that matter is welcome to. We also will have a public hearing on two of those rezoning cases that we have. So if you guys want to wait for that time, you're welcome to as well. But if not, if you're in question, you are welcome to open citizens comments. Let's open up citizens comments. Very good. Everyone is definitely allowed to come and speak as they wish. Please take your first and last name, write it down, and your address, and you have three minutes. Well, I don't know if this is the appropriate moment, but um, regarding C2, from R2 to C2. Before you start. Right who, across who are, from 1820. Who are you? Christina Moore. Okay. Please write that first last name again. Uh, 1820. Thank you. Okay. I'm just curious about the traffic flow. That's my only concern. And this is regarding, I'm sorry. The rezoning from R2 to C2 okay. on that corner of 1820. Gotcha. I think we still are. Have discussion with you. Mm -hmm. It'll be a public hearing for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else this time? Seeing none, Mr. Vice Chair, we want you to close this as far as Very good. This is an item E approval of the minutes. So I, it was noted that Commissioner Klein was not at the last meeting, so his name did appear a couple times during the text. Um, so I would ask for approval of the minutes with the substitution of Klein for Coin at a couple of the a couple of the text on the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for the June 12th meeting with the changes of Commissioner Klein to Commissioner Coin. Second. All there. Very good, thank you very much. This is item F4 to zoning appeals. This is item F1 rezoning for Casey's gas station, zone 23-2. So quick background, Bach and Company has submitted a rezoning application on behalf of Leanna Thomas Barney. It is for a tract of land located on the west side of 183rd, south of US 54. The land was recently annexed by the city of Goddard on August 7th, bringing it into the corporate limits of Goddard. And when this happens, the default zoning that is applied is an R1 single family residential. The developer would like to rezone the land to General Business District C2 for Casey's gas station, and after review by the Planning Commission, final review will be by the City Council, and if approved, to be reclassified 30 days after publication in the City newspaper. At this point, the Planning Commission will go through the requirements laid out in Article 13, which are derived from Kansas Law 1257. There will be a public hearing on the matter, after which the public hearing will be closed and the Planning Commission will deliberate. The decision of the Planning Commission, along with the reason for their decision, will be conveyed to the City Council. This is item F analysis. This is under Article 13, Section 100.H.1-17. You guys have seen this many times. Feel free to stop me at any time if you have any questions about it, but I'm going to read from the text, and then the purple is my answers from the text. And so here we go. I want what are the existing uses in their character and condition of subject property in the surrounding neighborhood? A subject property is currently single family residence, detached. The land use to the east and north is a bar and outdoor seasonal venue. That's the out west venue. To the south, the land use is farming ranch land, no improvements. To the west, the land use is convenience store. 
I will mention again, every time he says no improvements, this comment came up before, no improvements, that's a classification by the county in terms of actually built environment. It's talking about an actual building. So when it says no improvements, it's not talking about the quality of life or the quality of how, what it brings to any type of development. It just simply means that it's, there's nothing actually on the land. So say it's farming, it just means usually grain or grass or some ILO with no actual barn or something on it. There's no improvement meaning structure. To the west, the land use is a convenience store. Uh, what is the current zoning of the subject property in that surrounding neighborhood in relation to the request? The land is currently zoned rural residential RR. That's a county classification. To the east and north is zoning a C2 general business district. To the south is zoning as a PUD, a planning and development. To the west is zoning a C2 general business district. Is the length of time the subject property has remained undeveloped vacant as other factor in consideration? I put no. The US 54 quarter of growth has increased and the current property is currently residential. Uh, with the increase in US 54 and KDOT purchasing more right of way, increase the visibility of the slot from US 54, which is ideal for commercial development. So if you're familiar with that area, there was a house that was recently acquired by uh, KDOT, Secretary of Transportation, and they demolished it. So that increased the visibility of the site, which made it more ideal for commercial, because commercial wants high visibility from US 54. Would the request correct an error in the application of these regulations? No, there's no error in correction. Is the request caused by change or changing conditions in the area of the subject property? And if so, what is the nature of significance such change or changing conditions? So it's increased US 54 commercial growth, which is something that we've actually seen quite a bit of. Uh, with Out West development and also with Camp Bow Wow and other developments like um, Brahms and Starbucks and scooters, etc. More commercial growth is happening on 54, and so this is just another opportunity to capture on that growth. Do adequate sewer disposal and water supply and all of the necessary public facil facilities, including street access, exist or can they be provided to certain uses that be committed on such property? So, yes, sewer and water and street are already available in that area. Would the subject property need to be platted or replatted or in lieu of dedications made for right of way, easements, and access control or building setback lines? And so, yes, the land is not platted and would need to be platted, and they would go through a platting in the future. Would a screen plan be necessary for existing or potential uses of the subject property? So, no, screen would only be required if it was a budding residential. The only residential spot was demolished by KDOT, and then this spot itself is residential, but it's going to be demolished for the commercial use itself. And everything else in that surrounding area is commercial. Is suitable vacant land or buildings available or not available for development that currently has the same zoning as is requested? Uh, there is a dearth of available commercial buildings. A vacant commercial land accounts for about 50% of commercial land. So that, we have a lot of zoning for commercial, but only about 58% of it, uh, or sorry, I should say about 42% is actually built. 58% is vacant land. So we have a lot of zoned commercial, but not a lot of built commercial. If the request is for business or industrial uses, are such uses needed to provide more services or employment opportunities? So it is commercial. Um, commercial jobs would be created, but they would be lower and service jobs with high substitution. Substitution means that in this particular case, that if you were going to have a one-to-one, -one, for example, there's a quick shop in Murphy. So hypothetically, if Casey said they were bringing in like 10 jobs, there's 10 of an equal type of job already in our market in terms of Murphy's and quick shop or other gas stations around the area. So, it, it would be creating jobs, it just would not be considered high-end jobs or basic jobs or uh, what are called base support jobs. Is the subject property suitable for the uses in the current zoning to which it has been restricted? So no, R1 does not allow for commercial uses, and so it would have to go through rezoning. To what extent will the removal of the restrictions, i.e. the approval of the zoning request detrimentally affect other property in the neighborhood? I do not see any foreseeable negative impact on other properties, um, as most of them are commercial, there's actually a gas station across the street. So Murphy's is literally right across the street from the stairs. <coughs> So 13, would the request be consistent with the purpose of the zoning district classification and intent and purpose of these regulations? So under 102 C2 general business district, the district is established to buy for retail businesses and for service establishments not generally in the center, not generally located in the central business district because of the need for space, the particular nature of their operation, their accessibility in order to public. Austin parking is required and also screen in order to reduce possible adverse environmental uh, effects on adjacent residential properties. So this definitely, I would say, is that leads us to be in conformance with zoning district purpose. This is going to be C2, and this is going to be for a gas station, so there's going to be a lot of motor republic going on to this type of land use, and you would not traditionally see a gas station uh, in the central business district. That's why they're reclassified as C2, and it's a lot of so Article 1.101 Purpose, these regulations are intended to serve the following purposes as outlined here. I will note, generally speaking, these purposes are very large and, and kind of vague in some respects, but I do believe, generally speaking, it conforms to the intent purpose of the subdivision regulations in, in general. 
is the request in conformance with the comprehensive plan and does it further enhance the implementation of the plan? So page 17 of the comprehensive plan that states as a goal to encourage a diversified commercial industrial development and means to promote economic stability, increase the local tax base, and improve local employment opportunity for citizens of the community. Uh, objectives include influence functional and efficient commercial development along the US 54 corridor. Page 60 of the comprehensive plan shows the future land use map in this area as a residential with the surrounding area as commercial. So they left this area as residential on the future land use map simply because I think they thought that Austin stayed there in perpetuity. But everything else around that area for the future was shown as commercial and definitely meets some of the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan. What is the nature of support or opposition to the request? So general support comes in desire to increase the tax base for the city and diversify the land use composition. Uh, I haven't actually heard any negative opposition to this request. Um, so I haven't found any phone calls or letters or anything. At, as mentioned, Liam and Thomas Barney are the property owners of the only residential lot there where everyone's no actually selling. So I think they're going to be compensated for that endeavor. 16, is there any information? Are there any recommendations on this request available from professional persons or persons with related expertise, which would be helpful in this evaluation? So I haven't actually reached, reached out to anybody because it's, it's a gas station, there's not much really to talk about it. It's, um, central, it's on, the, uh, on the 54 corridor, so I don't think there's any much more to reach out regarding this. I would also maybe perhaps for one thing to consider is that gas stations, if hypothetically if they do go away, you have to go through an environmental uh, repair process, so to speak. And we saw that with Aaron Schnook's property on Main Street where you have to dig out all the dirt ship it off to Tawanda, silt it, you know, ship it out and bring in new dirt. So hypothetically, if this gas station were to go away, it would have to go through a remediation process. That's something just to consider. By comparison, does the relative gain to the public health safety or general welfare uh, outweigh the loss in property value or hardship imposed upon the applicant by not approving their request? So the development is for commercial use and only close proximity to residential properties being demolished. As mentioned, I don't foresee any negative This is the property in question. Here's Murphy's gas station. Here's Dairy Queen. You have Rob's over here in Starbucks and everything else. Walmart's right around this area over here. This property went away. It's demolished and out west is right here. This area in blue is uh, residential property, which is being, and has already been annexed and is going through the rezoning now and will be demolished. There's a small possible publication for state law legally it's approved as the form. It is recommended the Planning Commission approve the rezoning request for case number zone 23 2. At this point, you, Mr. Vice Chair, you can open the public hearing related to zone 23 2 for consideration of a rezoning application to rezone track of land from R1 single family residential CG general commercial. So, Mr. Vice Chair, at this point, if you want, you can open the public hearing. Uh, does anybody have anything they'd like to talk about with this particular uh, case? Good evening, Phil Meyer with Baltimore Company, agent for the applicants. Um, I have nothing to add to what Mike has done. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have about this proposed development and what you're talking about. So just so the planning commission knows this. You approved a preliminary plat on the south piece, uh, Goddard City Center. We're going to replat this piece with this into multiple lots, which will be Goddard City Center second. Um, so we'll, when we bring you a plat, we'll be combining this new piece with the piece that you've already approved here for C2. But that's basically the application area for the proposed shoes. That's the land that's going to be used. Mm -hmm. That's not good. With that, I'll answer any questions you may have. If not, I'll go sit down. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Okay, we'll close the citizens' comments. Close the public hearing. The public hearing. This is item F 
Two, rezoning for 1001 South Daughter Road, zoning 23 3. So, a quick background Barb Incorporated has submitted a reasonable application on behalf of Bob Armstrong of JGB Properties as far as tract of land located north of 23rd, south of Suwannee Drive. The developer would like to rezone the land into a general business district C2 for any potential businesses to lease the property. After review by the planning commission and final review, we city council and approved to be reclassified 30 days after publication in the city newspaper. At this point, the planning commission will go through the requirements laid out in Article 13, which are derived from Kansas State Law 12 757. There will be a public hearing on the matter, after which the public hearing will be closed and the planning commission will deliver it. Decision of planning commission along with the reason for the decision will be conveyed to the city council. So, as I mentioned, you've seen this before, but we'll go, we'll go through the process, and purple is my answer, and feel free to stop me at any time if you have any questions. So, number one, what are the existing uses and their character and condition on the subject property in the surrounding neighborhood? The subject property is currently a general office building, which is one of the four stories. This is a county classification according to its land use. It has functioned as a church for a time. The land use to the east is farming ranch land, no improvements. To the south, the land use is vacant, but is intended to be developed into duplexes. To the west, the land use is single-family residence detached. To the north, is single-family single residence detached. The land use to the east and north is a bar. With, excuse me, that's wrong. What is the current zoning in the subject property and that of the surrounding neighborhood in relation to the west? The land is currently zoned R2, two-family residential. To the east, the zoning is rural residential. That's a county classification. To the south, the zoning is R2, two-family residential. To the west, the zoning is R1. And to the north, the zoning is R1, single-family. Uh, is the length of time the subject property has remained undeveloped, vacant, as zone a factor in the consideration? Uh, yes, social and religious buildings tend to have an exemption in residential neighborhoods, churches, social, uh, churches, schools, colleges. However, when these land uses leave, the buildings are difficult to repurpose because of the zoning exclusivity that they reside within. So that's not uncommon. A lot of cities see this. You'll have a church or a college or a school, and then they no longer function as a church or a college or a school. And then what do you do with that building? You know, because it's in an exclusive zoning classification. So you can either repurpose in terms of bringing in residential you know, lofts or something in that building, or you have to go through rezoning or it just stays vacant. So those are kind of the options that cities have to look at. Would the request correct an error in the application of these regulations? So no, there's no error in correction. Is the request caused by change or changing conditions in that area of the subject property? And if so, what is the nature and significance of such change or changing conditions? So yes, the land around that area was gifted to the city by the Grace Southern Baptist Church, which was sold to the developer for the big army building currently underway, which will become 29 duplexes in that area. The church building was separate, and developers trying to repurpose it. Do adequate sewers, uh, disposal, and water supply, and all of the necessary public facilities, including street access, exist, or can they be provided to serve the use that would be permitted on the subject property? So yes, sewer, water, and street are all readily available in that area. Would the subject property need to be replatted or platted in lieu of dedications made for right of way, easements, and access control of those set up lines? So no land was replatted during the planning of the big arm development, so it's already been through a replatting process. Would a screening plan be necessary for existing or potential uses of the subject property? So yes, screening is required since the property is abutting residential to the south and west, um, and typically would require screening of that type of nature. Is suitable vacant land or buildings available or not available for the development that currently has the same zoning? So as mentioned in the last uh, rezoning case, we only have about 58% that's actually vacant or commercial, so 42% is built in the commercial environment that we have. If the request is for business or industrial uses, are such uses needed to provide more services or employment opportunities? Um, so commercial jobs could be created, but it's, it's ex not currently known what is going to go over there other than at one point they were looking at possibly a, um, a business that did fences. Uh, they would use it for office space. Uh, I don't know if that would create a lot of jobs or not, so we're not really sure exactly at this point what would be going in that area other than something that would be allowed in the C2 district. Is the subject property suitable for the uses of the current zone which has been restricted? So now R2 does not allow for commercial uses. And to what extent will the removal of the restrictions, i.e. the approval of the zoning request detrimentally affect other properties in the neighborhood? So it's possible the negative impact on the residential without screening. High traffic flows could negatively impact residential values potentially. Uh, that's according to Jack Manning, who's a residential land analyst. But as mentioned, this area is off of 199th and 23rd. So in terms of traffic flow, there's probably a larger potential impact coming from the Starbond district more than from this would the request be consistent with the purpose of the zoning district classification and intent and purpose of these regulations? So 102C2 General Business District, as mentioned before, currently it would be unknown because we, we're not really sure what possible tenants they would have other than the fence business that they mentioned last time. But generally speaking, it would be considered in line with the C2 if you're repurposing it, considering that it already has a parking lot and it's kind of designed for an office space. Article 1.101 for the purpose of the regulations. So generally speaking, since the Article 1.101, which is 
what the subdivision regulations are. Basically, outlining what they're for is very broad. So, I mean, you can believe that's in conformance with the intent purpose of the subdivision regulations, just generally speaking. Is the request in conformance with the comprehensive plan and does it further enhance the implementation of the plan? So page 17 of the comprehensive plan for the goal encourage diversified commercial industrial development means to promote economic stability, increase the local tax base, improve local employment opportunities for citizens of the community. Page 60 of the comprehensive plan shows the future land use map in this area is public or quasi-public with surrounding areas residential. What is the nature of the support opposition to the request? So general support comes in the desire to increase the tax base <coughs> and diversify the land use opposition. No one reached out to me prior to me putting together the slideshow, but I would, I would guess the general opposition would come in the form that people would not want to see converted to a commercial use, just generally speaking. Perhaps due to traffic flow, I would guess, but I haven't heard anything other than perhaps what we spoke about today. So no one reached out to me prior to this meeting. Is there any information or are there any recommendations or requests available from professional persons or persons with related expertise which would be helpful in an evaluation? So I usually, when it comes to property value, I always reach out to Jack Mannion because he's the one who does this for the county, for appraisals and such. Um, he said it is possible the high traffic could be detrimental to residential <coughs> properties. Um, a privacy fence should be required, he recommended, to mitigate negative impacts, which is something that we usually generally require anyway in our subdivision regulations. Offices are generally more acceptable with low noise and traffic. Um, business that requires regular truck use could be could be considered an issue if it was regular truck use. But that being said, as mentioned, if we're more concerned about high traffic flow, I think the issue would come more from the star bond with the baseball diamonds once it punches on the 199, more so in this particular lot. By comparison, does a relative gain to the public health, safety, or general welfare outweigh the loss of property value or the hardship imposed by the, upon the applicant by not approving the request? So not approving the request could require the building to be demolished to accommodate residential in the future as the building can not really be converted to residential. It's a smaller building. I doubt they could put very many lofts or something inside that building to repurpose it. So either would just sit vacant or probably have to get demolished in the future. So this is the property in question over here. And the stars over here. You can see the water and sewer in this area. Here's the big arm development right around here. This area. Here's the old church. You can see the parking that accommodates it. Here's the zoning for that area. So this is all R2, R1, R1. This is any place that's sort of blank is just because of the county still. This is industrial district and the Star over in this area. This is Brentwood Apartments. Financially, a small cost for publication is required by state law. Legally, it's approved as the form. It is recommended the Planning Commission approve the rezoning request for case number zone 23 3. At this point, Mr. Vice Chair, if you will, you're welcome to open the public hearing for zone 23 3. So open the public hearing. You know, anybody to speak to this issue? Okay. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Chris Baum from Barber. I'll kick it off. Uh, I'd like to re rebuttal if there are questions that come up from the other residents when we're done, but I thought I'd kick it off. Mike, can I go up to the aerial view? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Green line is uh, Okay. Yeah, very good. That's yeah. it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for having us out here tonight. The, that is a, an older church that he bought, Bob Armstrong, the developer bought the, the piece of property that he acquired. He's had a couple of inquiries for office space, generally speaking, and was trying to work a deal and realized the zoning wasn't in the same character. So, and that is, like Micah said, churches usually can reside legally in residential, so it's easy to put a church in about anywhere. In fact, you're guaranteed that almost in any zoning district. So that's kind of how that evolved over time. It's a smaller lot. Um, you might notice the big arm addition that the two access points for it were directed to 23rd and 199th. So the traffic, you know, there are going out to two arterial streets. If you converted it to residential or kept it residential, you can see those are smaller lots in there. I mean, you might be able to get six or eight lots in there. Um, so if you did and you had the number of trips generated per day, 10 or 20 from duplexes, that would probably trip more trips than the office and the parking lot. It's not really on any kind of an industrial corridor, so it doesn't, any kind of heavy use seems unlikely. The building looks like it's in nice repair and the parking lot's not in bad shape, so I would assume it will be an office type of something. But again, it would be rezoned commercial, so it would be subject to the uses that are established for that zone. Um, so there could be another question about the traffic and 
again, I would just say that it's probably a little less intensive with an office type building or a parking lot with a single drive than a road that might come out or a small cul-de-sac with six or so lots in there. So we would ask that you consider this positively tonight. And I'll stand for any questions right now. And then if, I, if there are any questions that come up, I'd like that opportunity for rebuttal at the end. So I stand for any questions. No, I've noticed that he's got it set up for, I mean, it's been revamped and the building itself this looks from the outside, it looks like it's in good shape. It's in pretty good shape, yes. So that it's got office space, but they're just not able to lease it? Be, they can't right now because the zoning won't allow it. Right. Because <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> he called me when I was on vacation in Ohio, I said, <laughs> not without planning commission approval. <laughs> If we rezone this tonight as a C2, they decided whatever. This, I mean, as he's developing this big arm thing, you know, uh, it's stuck in the C2, is there? Or, and he doesn't, it doesn't do well as a commercial building. I guess that's my question is, you know, what if he decides to tear it down? He's just, it's still stuck in the C2. It would be there, he'd have to rezone to go to a residential use. Because I don't want your C2 zone to last for residential if they want to eventually. You'd have to come back again and go through the process of turning it into residential. I'm just trying to make the most of the building yeah. that structure is there. That's his intent, yes. I'll let others speak. So uh, the only other exception to that would be apartments are allowed in C2. But there's not enough space to put the apartment complex over there. So, but from a residential perspective, apartments are allowed to see too. But that's not the intent. The intent of this is to repurpose that building, not to tear down the building apartment complex. No, sure. Just to be that, make that clear. Mm -hmm. that clear. Yeah. And I would just Sorry. say. One more question for you, real quick. Yes. Um, and I, have, I think you spoke to this a little bit. I have, you, you're anticipating how much traffic flow. Sorry, I think you mentioned it, but I was. I didn't it will completely depend on the use. Okay. If it's an accounting office, a few trips per day. Sure. People coming in and out. To, um, I'm trying to think how, what kind of an intensive use that could be. If it was a, a barber shop or hair salon, you might have four trips per hour, you know, four or five trips per hour. Um, that's a guess. Sure. Yeah. But just come and go traffic. Um, is there plans to add to the parking lot at all or anything, or that's uh, I think he, he would like to just rent it as, as it sits. Okay. Right. Leave the grass around it and rent it as, okay. a, as an office, probably. is. The last two clients that potentially wanted to lease it was a daycare and a, uh, a fence company for offices. So that was the last two that tried to lease that spot. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So my question and concern is that we have this property here and right now this road is really difficult to get up and down during school hours. And I want to say I think C2 is probably better than R2 at the end of the day, but that's my only concern for the council is when you look at the traffic and the kids walking up and down that road. Where is there a bus stop close to that spot or is there? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. There's no way to get to that to all the schools that are right here. Whether it's Amelia or uh, Goddard High School or Goddard Middle School. That's my only concern. Okay. It's a little quiet in here. <laughs> 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 so, sure. My name is <coughs> George Lane. I live at 227 North Spruce here in Goddard. I've got a, just a general question about development um, as it relates to water and sewer treatment. 
are we tracking the, the capacity limits that we're approaching as we continue to add developments? I know some of these things haven't been brought online yet, but every time we add a development, our, we're decreasing our capacity for water and sewer. I know we've got some limits with water, with our water wells. And we've kind of built ourselves into a corner with our water treatment plants in terms of expansion and room for that. So is that being tracked or are there any percentage or numbers that, that uh, we could <laughs> yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it is being tracked. Obviously, it's tracked by public works. And so when we, we try to work in tandem with public works, we look at growth. But numbers wise, public works has some numbers for growth in terms of volume of. So, so if, if I went and talked with them, they could give me some idea of what capacity we have left. Yes, yeah. on the general speaking, yeah. Online and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say, though, obviously, because you don't know until it's actually online, but generally speaking. Well, you yeah. Can, you don't want to end up like Mays and end up in a situation where you're out of capacity for water and sure. you know, sewer. It happened years ago, too. Yeah, sure, sure. So, public <laughs> works is what has got most of the numbers in terms of growth and development. But uh, we work in Canada. Um, okay, well. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Mark, you mentioned the Canadian Water Act. Yeah. Um,
understand the foot traffic, the car traffic. For your consideration, um, we do a lot of traffic analysis at Barber. There are companies that come out and put TV, TV cameras out and they record all the movements, pedestrian, bicycles, vehicles. They can count trucks and cars and motorcycles and everything. So you, if you ever chose to do that, you don't have to put the old tubes out anymore to do the counts. You can do um, video-based counts with automatic analytics, and just so you know. And I stand for any other questions. If not, I'm finished. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Would you like to speak to this case? Very good. <laughs> so at this point, Mr. Vice Chair, you can close this or close the hearing. Yeah, close the public hearing. as to what point you know we do need to do like Chris has mentioned and we can get an actual uh, pedestrian count pedestrian count, count on Goddard Road. I mean that, that has been a, a busy road. Yeah it's definitely gonna be a busy road the years at the start on uh, punches in especially because we have the um, we have the success sports bar and then the pickleball and everything else and then the baseball diamonds will probably dump on the 199th if the crown is packed. Then once that goes in it Goddard Road's gonna become very busy very busy but mostly it's going to be from the start on district, not necessarily this particular land use. In terms of traffic studies, yeah, we would probably at some point contract with somebody to do a traffic study and an analysis of pedestrians and bicyclists and make a determination of what kind of road we want. If it's going to be a share road, which is just the fancy term shared road, you know what I mean? And you have bicycles and cars sharing the road, or do we want dedicated bicycle lanes? And, you know, do we want four foot sidewalks, six foot sidewalks? Um, that whole area north south generally is an open ditch, and so we would have to consider burying storm water and then doing curbing better and everything else. And so, in terms of general cost, it's usually about a million dollars nowadays to do that mile. So, give or take, it would probably be a little bit more if we're going to do extra wide sidewalks, etc. And taking into account that streets and sidewalks and everything else hits our bond limit as well, so that has to just be taken into account. But over time, it's probably something that would need to be addressed. But if we're going to have to condemn properties to take extra right of way for putting in those sidewalks and right. extra wide lanes, etc., it can be very sticky. So we'd have to work around that. I know we've talked about also as pedestrian and making Goddard more pedestrian and more friendly and bicycles and stuff like that. That's and right. Goddard Road is a major artery mm -hmm. to the city. Yeah. It would be, if we're going to do it somewhere, you know, that to me that would be. A good spot for a good a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are definitely the discussions that can be had with city council in terms of if, if that's a priority before the planning commission, city council, then that can collaboratively be something to discuss and see if we can add it into that capital improvement program for long term to include traffic study, pedestrian studies, bicycle studies, and then get bids on total cost right. what that would look like. And then if we're going to bond that, because we probably presumably we'd have to bond it, then how would we cash flow that bond? And it probably have to be, you know, cash flow from the capital improvement program. So just theoretically. But those are good because if, if that's something that's a priority of the planning commission to see one ninety nine be improved in such a way, then that would certainly be something that should come up with city council so that they can you guys can collectively decide if that's gonna be a priority for improvement. So yeah, I think it'd be a prime opportunity with the, the success going in. They're gonna pay all that anyway. Yeah. <coughs> 
I'm, I would just comment. This side of uh, 109 is at least sidewalking down this. It's when you come to this part of 109, there's right. no sidewalking. Right, so there's, there's a sidewalk that runs from here all the way down on the west side of 109, this portion over here, but then it drops off. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, as mentioned, there are some kids that prefer to walk in the ditch over here on the east side. And so you will see a lot of kids, generally speaking, walking in the ditches during the school hours on the east. Pertaining to the specific case, I think you know C two for that particular building would probably be the best used for the, that that plot of land. Right. Otherwise, you know, just be sitting there and eat. Yeah. Yeah. It's not all that good. H.1, this is 23rd South Edition Final Plat. So, a quick background Bob and company submitted an application on behalf of the developer Paul Kelsey of uh, Kicking Development to, tra to plat a tract of land located on the northwest corner of 23rd 167. This land was an island annexation and was approved to be annexed by the Board of County Commissioners on November 2nd, 2022. It was approved by City Council for annexation on November 7th, of 2022. After the annexation went through the rezoning process to be considered for an R22 family residential classification was approved for rezoning on January 17th of 2023. Uh, the planning commission is considered approving a final plat for the 23rd South Edition development. Number of lots are 212, zoning is R2, land use is duplex and single family. Duplex lot count is 81, which is 38.3% or 162 units. Single family detached lot count is 131 or 61.7%. Gross acreage is 66.98. The square feet is about 2.9 million. So this is the final plat. As you'll notice, it has two exit points here on the 23rd and exit point on 167. Most of the reserves, as mentioned before, asked uh, during citizen comments, reserves, generally speaking, are going to be used for detention. Um, but when you see a reserve, you can always look at the plat text on page one, which is in your agenda, and you can see what the reserve is dedicated for. I believe the single family is going to be on the west side of the duplex on the east side to sort of add, add a transition, which was one of the concerns, I believe, with the planning commission to have a good transition between the larger lots um, of Marie Meadows and the duplexes. So we'll go from Marie Meadows single family to single family on the west side and then duplex on the east side. This is the drainage, so it's kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of see, generally speaking, where the flow of water will go, and you can see the, the extra outlines over here where the reserves are for detention. Financially non legally it's approved as a form. I just recommend the Planning Commission approve the final plan for the 23rd South Edition development. I will say that Bob and he's working with Harlan Ford and the city engineer for review of the engineer for storm water and everything else that goes into it for the calculations. So then is this a conditional approval? Do we need to make sure that? It's probably helpful if you want to put a conditional approval in there. Either way, it's fine. I think. Bob, Bobman and Harlan have worked before. They're not exactly unknown in certain particular area. So, generally speaking, they've already submitted the drainage plans to Harlan. He's just got to review them. So, if you want to approve a contingent upon final approval, final review by Harlan, you're welcome to. Answered this before, but 
do you remember um, there's setbacks here for road expansion, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, we've they've dedicated more land over here, 60 feet, uh, so 30 feet from the center line of those. But basically, you will have 60 feet right of way, and then it bumps out to 75 in this corner over here. Okay. For turning lanes. If I'm wrong, correct. So, so, so far, that's what I was thinking. I thought everybody. Well, I mean, as mentioned, there's this in the comments, future traffic flow is a concern, obviously. So we, during the planning process, we try to have them dedicate more land for road expansion. But as we saw, 199 is a hodgepodge of different land uses from different time periods. So it becomes difficult to sort of bring an amalgamation of that for transportation purposes. It's, you know, 40 foot right of ways, 35 foot right of ways, 60 foot right of ways, and you're trying to, it's like, you know, trying to bring a spine into alignment. Not to mention that some of those properties on 199 are right up to the road. So difficult, not impossible, but definitely difficult in 199's case. So Street, 
going into the Rustic Creek development and further to the north. This is a hammerhead orientation of the street. There's a reserve in the northeast corner for a dry, uh, dry pond detention. We are requiring screening, and so they've opted to do screening in the form of landscaping. You know, sewer and water, this landscaping plan is included in your agenda packet. Sewer and water are going to be in easements, which will have to be dedicated by a separate instrument because it's already been platted in the past. So they're going to opt to dedicate the easements by a separate instrument, which means they'll do a survey, they'll do a review by a four acre, myself. And broke Brandenburg and then recorded with the register deeds for water sewer and any other utilities. As I mentioned, screening is required because we have Rustic Creek to the north, which is single family R1, so we're requiring screening on the north side. And we do have a whole singular house to the north of the shop, one house on North Main, uh, so we are requiring additional screening on the west side as well. In terms of screening with landscaping, there was no particular provisions for spacing. It just had to be reviewed as a plan. So it's being reviewed today by Planning Commission and myself. But if you have any concerns about it or feel it is inadequate, feel free to amend it as necessary. Four Shillings is over here on the north. Uh, south side, excuse me. Then you were going to have Camp Bow Wow, and then you were going to have Sonic over here. The fire department is over here this area. Financially, not legally approved as a form. It is recommended the Planning Commission approve the site plan for the Goddard Crossing, and we do have a representative of um, the National here if you do have any questions. Can you tell me the architecture firm that's working on this project? Here's your cursor and the green little bar will be on it. Please state first and last name. Uh, <coughs> pressure move of bench. Uh, the uh, developer supplied the architectural renderings. I'll be honest with you, I do not know the architect of record on these. I believe these were a previous uh, uh, architectural structure that he's built in other municipalities and is utilized on this side as well. The emails are going to use Jacob Cook. Is that the email? Is it the architect? That's the developer. Justin. 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 Yeah.
Where, where was the screening required again? On which sides? North, Between which properties? North and west side. There is one home, um, one single family detached home on North Main, right to the northeast corner of Quick Shop. And Rustic, Rustic Creek hasn't been fully developed yet, but phase two or phase three of Rustic will have single family abutting the uh, four plexus. schedule on the landscaping plan on your agenda That's packet. It. Okay, sorry, yeah. I keep refreshing, I keep trying. Yeah, so I'll give you your caliper of the tree as well, in terms of which is just means the diameter of the trunk, and then it gives you an idea, it gives you the, it gives you the um, botanical name classification, and it gives you sort of the common name for, like we say, fir, and then we'll give you the botanical name, and then we'll give you the caliper. I just say, you know, shoe shoe marco. Shoe marco. Or shoe okay. marco. Okay. And then the RRD. That is a royal raindrop crab apple. And then the CDM. Uh, C, 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 and D. It's a C, D as in dog, M. It's in the, uh, the northwest. It's on the north side and the west. There's some <coughs> circles there. Or aesthetic, probably. Or aesthetic. 
to the south is more shalons. So. Right, but it looks like yeah, you know, they're out of trees. Yeah, yeah, the density is just less there. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I talked with the developer. We didn't put the landscape plan together, so no consultant for that. But we talked about it, uh, density versus that. Just felt like the, the density didn't quite fit with the neighborhood necessarily, and the landscape would be more um, peaceful in this area. Um, so then the question came down to density. Which is what you're also talking about here. Sure. So, um, we, we submitted a, a prior one, there was some discussion, and then this is a more dense than the first submittal that was uh, submitted. So a couple of items here. Um, Joshua Gaines is running the city to work with additional code enforcement and building inspection. We're happy to welcome on board. And Joshua, if you want to say anything or just introduce yourself to the planning commission. And yes, uh, uh, my name is Joshua Gaines and been here almost a month and just want to say grateful for the opportunity and looking forward to serve the citizens of Garden. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a good addition. We captured it from Wichita, so that's always good. Um, city Council is currently going through an interview process for hiring a new city administrator. They did several interviews, and so they're going to probably announce a decision soon in the coming weeks. Uh, the question of rescheduling, rescheduling a joint workshop has come up, and the community development director is asking the planning commission if they have a date in mind when they would like to meet. So this question has come up. I know we have to cancel due to the personal matters, um, but do you guys have any ideas? I know City Council said they want to meet on a planning commissioner day. Um, which, you know, that only leaves a couple months left of the year, but do you guys have any thoughts on the matter? I still, I'm still in favor of it. I think there are just things to be on the same page, and it's just easier to do it that way. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree, too. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
whichever day is acceptable, I think. Okay. We're going to be here anyway. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be here anyway. <laughs> okay. Especially if they're going to do it on our night, it's easy. I think the new city administrator might be joining us mid-September, maybe, or early October. Would you prefer to have the new city administrator here for that joint workshop? Would that be a good idea? Do you have any thoughts on that? I think it would be. I think it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think that would, would not be a bad idea to you know, start out. You know, we all understand what, what they're looking for and what, what he understands what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. Very good. So if they do announce a new city administrator soon, um, then we'll try to include that new city administrator in the new workshop. And then if it's September, if it's mid-September, we might miss the planning commission date, but if it, they do hire mid-September or early October, then we could have it in October with the city council and a new city administrator meeting here during the planning commission meeting. Is that something you think it is? I think so. so okay. yeah, I think I would say if we meet in October regardless, Okay. Yeah. Regardless yeah. if we have any signatures yes. or not. Yeah. No, wait. It's yeah. too long. Let me look at my calendar real quick and make sure I know the date that is. I don't see anything. So we have September 11th for the next one. It would be October 9th, which is Columbus Day. Is there anybody Columbus Day off? No, we don't. So the October, October 9th would be the meeting. Jay, Planning Commissioner Collins. No comments. No. I mean, it's it kind of it's tough sitting off for, for another month. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to meet again, huh? Shake the rust off. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. I know there's a lot going on. It was good to get away for a month for me personally, but uh, it is good to get back in the swing of things. We had a lot of projects, obviously. Every development we approve, it just seems to get more developments. So it's like you approve a plat, and all of a sudden you're approving three plats, and then mm -hmm. you approve one development for a couple of four plats, and all of a sudden you're approving apartment complexes. So it's just it's just been non-stop, which is a good thing. You'd rather be busy than bored. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good problem. Yeah, it's a good problem to have. Those are things that we're trying to do here. I mean, I, I, I agree with George. You know, you gotta look at where your water uses and your sewer. Those things we need to make sure we're on top of or, or at least mindful of as we're approving these new right. buildings and commercial roads. Yes, and we are in the works with uh, several plans to acquire more water rights, <coughs> water volume, et cetera, to make sure that our developments are properly supported in that regard. But yeah, these are definitely things that need to be taken into account. Okay, excuse me. Move to adjourn. No, I'll second. Any rule in favor? Aye. Aye.